there's a thing Frank Zappa said, which is quoted in his book, uh, about talking about music. According to him, talking about music is like dancing about architecture. So what I'm trying to do today, I think, is dancing about dancing about architecture. Hi everyone, here's the book I once again, and besides reading books occasionally, I also am a big music buff. I am, I, I, I don't think I'm in any way an expert, but I'm on a self-improving streak. And especially in the last few years, I've gotten more and more interested in the classic albums of pop music uh, from the 50s onward, of course, pop music in the broadest of senses. And of course, uh, being a music buff of that kind, I've always been interested in reading uh, Bloomsbury's uh, triple three series, 33 series, uh, 333 sound, call the series what you will, which is basically this series of very short academic books, or at least they're published in Bloomsbury's academic series, um, academics um, imprint, uh, that each of them take a famous writer or a famous journalist and these people give you a take, a theoretical take, on a classic album of the last 50, 60, 70 years. These things look awesome, they're very short and they're highly collectible for obvious reasons, they're also very pleasing on your bookshelf. But of course the content, I had no idea what to expect. Was this, uh, this series going to be about, I don't know, the trivia surrounding a specific record? Or, you know, um, uh, lyrics, uh, w was it going to be an analysis of the lyrics? Or of the technical skills involved in the creation of a specific record? What kind of theoretical approach would I find? And of course I could not but begin my exploration of this series with Fear of Music by Jonathan Lethem, one of my favorite writers for a series of reasons, most notably because I love both the writer and the record, talking as a uh, historical record, although in the eternal struggle between the two masterpieces, uh, like uh, established masterpieces by talking as Fear of Music, Remaining Light, I probably lean a little bit more toward Remaining Light, what about you? Uh, and the other reason why I thought this was a great place to begin, although this I only found out after I'd finished the book, so in hindsight I did well, because this is a brilliant companion piece to Jonathan Leifem's novel The Fortress of Solitude. The Fortress of Solitude is a masterpiece. If you ask me, it's one of the best novels of the 21st century. It's a very dense novel and terribly sad, but it's brilliant and beautiful, and it talks extensively about what it means to grow up as an adolescent in the New York City of the 1970s and early 80s. And talking ads play a crucial role in this book, although in The Fortress of Solitude, Remaining Light is the main um, talking, uh, talking ads text, which is intertextualized with, which is referred to most of the times. I use that word text because that's the kind of approach Lethem uses in his analysis of Fear of Music. He describes the record as an artifact and he proceeds to draw as much meaning as possible from these text, and when he discusses things that are not inherent to the text, for instance, the personality of the composers, of David Byrne, of the rest of the band, or the way these songs were played live, he does that with a wary eye, and he refers to theoretical concepts as that of the implied author. When he talks about David Byrne, he's not talking about the human being David Byrne, but about the author you can reconstruct without knowing anything about Byrne from your listening experience. At one point I believe he describes what he's going to do very beautifully when he says that what he wanted to do was to, you know, draw a circle on a page, draw the actual vinyl of uh, Fear of Music on a page, step into that vinyl and tell you all he could find inside of it. And that's what he does and that's why the book and the analysis is so great and brilliant and fruitful and also why at times it becomes borderline incomprehensible. Part of it has to do with the fact that Lethem is not the easiest of writers, I think. He writes in a very dense kind of prose and sometimes inside a block paragraph you find very complex uh, philosophical reflections in the span of two sentences which you have no hope of really grasping uh, completely. But at the same time, it has, it has inevitably something to do with the whole enterprise of talking about music, as mentioned at the beginning of the video. Uh, the great thing about music is that, in a way, it's the 
most universal language in the arts. You don't even need to understand the language of a song's lyrics in order to, you know, feel what the song wants to convey. In a way, that's the perfect language to bridge the distances between different cultures, between different ethnicities and people. As uh, Michael Shaban mentions in his beautiful novel Telegraph Avenue, uh, of, uh, very often when you don't understand another culture, one of the first things you learn to appreciate about them is their music. But at the same time, and this is another one of the points Shaban, Shaban makes in his awesome novel, at the same time the problem is that music is something inherently personal. The point is that we all experience the music of our lives in a different way, and uh, two of us might relate to a specific record in completely different ways, and some of us, for instance, might completely misunderstand the lyrics to a song, uh, that happens quite often, and consider that song unhappy and, you know, joyful um, song, whereas instead it's talking about suicide, or something like that, but even less superficially, without talking about lyrics, some of us will relate to, uh, you know, the same kind of music in completely different ways. I, for instance, uh, there are records I think are great and love totally. Um, Lift Your Skinny Fist by Godspeed You Black Emperor, In the Airplane Over the Sea by Neutral Milk Hotel. I love them, but I never listen to them because I find them too depressing. And of course, other people, lots of people, fans of these bands, would never agree with this kind of take. And the consequences of that, you can feel them at times in listen to analysis. Sometimes he starts talking about the song and he digresses a little bit and then at a certain point you're like, okay, no, Jonathan, I'm, I'm not really sure what you're trying to tell me. I really don't see your point about this specific piece. Again, that's inevitable, but I fear that at times Lethem's approach is a little bit too hermetic and too cryptic to, you know, help this kind of transaction and analysis of the record. But of course, Fear of Music itself is probably a record that lends itself very well to this kind of cryptic analysis, because it's a very mysterious, it's a very eerie record. And Lethem, in some of, in some of these chapters, discusses beautifully and in a very clear manner uh, ideas such as is Fear of Music a concept album? Is Fear of Music a science fiction record? Is it a record about aut autism, uh, Asperger's syndrome? Overall, it's a bit confusing at times, and if you're looking for a straightforward interpretation of Tolkien Head's music, or for a history of the band, this is probably not the book for you. There are some, there are several secondary sources on the band, and some of them are listed at the end of this volume. In general, it's a critical text that raises more questions than the one it answers, but that is an excellent sign in criticism. I'm very curious to see if the rest of the series has the same kind of approach, or if it will focus more on, I don't know, lyrics interpretation, history, context, these kinds of things. I've already ordered the volume on If You're Feeling Sinister by Bell and Sebastian, which is a record I'm a bit obsessed with, and I'll let you know how I find it, how I, what I think of it. Let me know if you've checked other volumes in this series and which ones I should look out for, and let me know if you prefer Remaining Light, Fear of Music, or if, you, if you're going to be the, the one hipster that says no, Tokinet 77 is the best. Thanks for watching, bye guys.